Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful, sunny day here in Perth, which is a refreshing change for anyone who has been living here in WA with all the rain we've been having recently. But the paddocks are greening up, so and our water tanks are filling up, so I'm certainly not complaining. Um, I just wanted to hop on here quickly just to talk a little bit about feed changing. So there's, I've seen a lot of chatter on the horse forums recently. Um, obviously we're having lots of supply chain issues, um, which I'm being affected by as well. Um, not just, you know, personally with my horses, but also with the business. We're living in a very strange time at the moment. Um, so lots of our feeds that we're used to feeding, um, are becoming more expensive or more difficult to get hold of and that obviously you know logistically that's a problem but it's also really important to think about it from the perspective of our horses so um there's also i've noticed you know there's there's quite a few um new feeds that are coming out you know our different sources of fiber and so on and there's always you know i put a post up the other day talking about you know the controversial things that people get the knickers in and not about and feed is certainly one of those. So, you know, having a really good form of fiber in our horse's diet, as well as, you know, that ad lib, low sugar meadow hay is so important for their digestive system. Um, but it's really, really important that you don't just suddenly switch from A to B because somebody says, you know, this new feed is the latest, greatest thing. It doesn't mean that it's not the latest greatest thing it just means that you need to think about whether it's right for your horse and also you know so for example here um my horses are eating their breakfast here this is gosh lovely golden oldie that he is um and it's we've got midnight over there as well and midnight is extremely feed sensitive um, I can't tell you how many different feeds I've tried over the years. You know, he's 22 now. Um, he doesn't do well on processed feeds. He doesn't do well on cool feeds. He doesn't do well on grain. He doesn't do well on anything that's high protein. Um, and he's extremely expressive. And, you know, we've, we've been together now for about 14 years, probably the longest relationship I've ever had in my life, which is quite funny. Um, and I know him, like I know when a feed isn't right for him. Sorry, that sun is a bit bright. Um, so there's a couple of things to consider. The first is that, you know, think about why are you changing? Why do you want to make a change? If you do want to make a change, is it that you want to get a bit more condition on them? Is it um, that you want to get, um, you know, a bit more you know, they're, they're doing more work, so you want to keep something up to them. Is there something up with them that, that you're thinking about? And then get some, you know, get some kind of professional advice. You know, a nutritionist like Jill from Feed Your Steed is a really awesome person to talk to. She's based here in WA and she's a fantastic equine nutritionist. Um, but just actually thinking about, okay, what's the best situation for my horses? So I keep my horses diet very simple. They're just on like a basic pellet. Um, I really like using beet pulp, which is becoming an increasingly difficult commodity to get hold of. Um, but it is so good for my horses. I also have some, some um, flaky bran in there. Um, and just some loose and chaff and just keep it really simple and then they have their supplements on top of that now one of the reasons why i steer clear from um sort of feeds that have extra minerals and extra prebiotics and probiotics and all the bells and whistles in is not just in terms of um you know okay so they can be more expensive but it's also tailoring it to the horse so you know horses like people like children we're not we're not all one size fits all so when you buy something that's like um got all those bits and pieces in it might give you that kind of convenience factor but the question is is it really ticking the boxes for your horse and what they need so um my sort of thoughts that i want to kind of leave with you today is think about why you're changing a feed is it because things are becoming um, more difficult to get hold of you know possibly more expensive um you know is it just to kind of because it's something new and it's something popular is, is there anything about your horse that may not agree with that you know have you had bad experiences with certain products in the past 
learn from those things and also get that kind of that real barometer of where your horse is at so that if they do change then you can you know know whether or not that change is being attributed to that change in feed really really important is if you are going to change something about your horse's feed for whatever reason it is you must do it gradually this is so so important you can't just all of a sudden go okay i want to change to you know this new thing that's come out and i'm just going to go boom change because the horse's gut midnight's come over to grab um the rest of gosh's feed now except midnight's like oh what's going on here um so it's it's really really important to change that gradually because the horse's gut uh, microbes a lot of the digestion goes on in the hind gut of the horse and it's really really important that you allow them time to adjust um, to those changes in in the feed and if you don't you can end up with all sorts of problems you know they can go down with colic and as we know that can be really pretty serious um, something that I do a lot of at this time of the year kind of like a I guess a tip is to work towards having really quite wet feeds so um, like I said I use I use a super fiber using um, beet pulp I'm a big fan of beet pulp I really like it if you're concerned about iron content you know you can rinse it but these guys are all on the extra copper and zinc the BJ copper and zinc that we do um, so we find that that counteracts any issues um, if there is high iron in their diet. These guys are playing musical chairs with their breakfast this morning. Um, so, you know, finding something that works for your horse and, you know, that might, you know, a good fiber. Okay. So, you know, we've got lots of options, options we've got, we've got these, you know, these, the benchmark, the perfect mash, you know, we've got maxi soy, we've got beet pulp, we've got the new fiber holes and um, the lupin fiber holes. And, all of those can can be great and can have and could be a really good fit for your horse but what i want you to think about is why am i changing like what's the reason and do it if you are going to change then do it gradually and keep an eye on the behavior of your horse if you find that there is a sudden switch or change in behavior if they start acting odd if they're not keeping their um their weight on as well you know so often that can be diet related so yeah don't get sucked in by the propaganda do things for the right reason and always support that gut of your horse because it's basically the engine room um, and if you need any advice on gut support we have a huge range um, of different products all different price brackets and for different reasons I don't know what that was somebody shouting or something anyway I'll leave you with that and I'll Speak to you again soon. Okay, bye.